Okay, uh, in the last video, we had considered some of the consequences when you take on the del gradient and just treat it as an independent vector in its own right. And then once you do that, we asked what happens if you stop performing vector operations. And in our last video, we looked at the consequences of taking the dot product of the del operator with different vectors. In this video, we just want to briefly introduce the concept of taking the cross product of the del operator with different vectors. And remember how the cross product is defined uh, in matrix terms. If we have a vector B and a vector C with these components and these components, if we take the cross product of them, so we have B cross C, and that would be this matrix. written out like this. That is the matrix definition of the cross product of two vectors. So if we have the del operator and just consider this as an independent vector in its own right, what happens there if we take the cross product of this with, say, with vector B? Now notice in our matrix definition, we have B cross C. So here, the components of vector B are written across, and afterwards, the component of vector C that follows in the next line down. So here, this would give us this matrix. We'll have the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, and here we have b sub x, b sub y, b sub z, and here i, j, k. And if we want to evaluate then. So this would be the cross part then of the del operator with another operator B. And it turns out, sure, certainly this is a valid operation. We can evaluate it what it is just by taking the determinant. And this will come out to be equal to the partial of B sub Z with respect to Y minus the partial of B sub Y with respect to Z, like this, that's the I component, and we get that by covering up this column and this row and taking the determinant on the resulting 2 by 2 matrix, and then we can continue it along, and we'll have plus the partial of B sub X with respect to Z minus the partial of B sub Z with respect to X. That's the J component, and the K component is the partial of B sub Y with respect to X minus the partial of B sub X with respect to Y. So that then is the cross product of the del operator with another vector. And what we're going to be doing then is essentially, if we're, for example, in a vector field so that dx, by, and b sub z are continuously changing, then it makes sense to take their derivatives like this. So then we can get a real expression for this vector cross product. And not only is this a valid expression, but it has a lot of physical significance, as we'll see um, in later videos on our vector analysis series. And this is what is called the curl of the vector. 
Now, one thing that is sometimes considered in a lot of physics and engineering books is what happens if you take the divergence of the curl? Now, divergence, of course, is when you take the dot product of a del operator to some vector. So I'm going to take the divergence of the curl. Well, this is the curl. So that means then we're going to be taking the dot product of this with the del operator. So we'll have Here's the del operator again. And we're going to take the dot product of this vector with this vector. So we have del dot del dot del cross b. In other words, we're taking the divergence of the curl. And what does that give us? So, if we take the dot product between these two vectors, here we have i dot i is 1. So, here I have a part with respect to x. So, when I take the dot product between these two vectors, I'm going to have the partial of these two terms here taken with respect to x. So we're going to have double derivatives here. Same thing here. Then we're going to have j dot j, that's 1, and we're taking the partial with respect to y of these partial derivatives. And same thing here, we have k dot k. So, to go back to our first term, we'll be taking the partial with respect to x of these partial derivatives. So for the first term here, we're going to have the partial square of b sub z with respect to x with respect to y minus partial square of b sub y with respect to x with respect to z. Then for here, we're taking the partials with respect to y as we take our dot product. So j dot j, that's 1. So here then we're going to have the partial of this with respect to y, the partial of that with respect to y. So we have plus partial squared of d sub x with respect to y with respect to z minus partial squared of b sub z with respect to y with respect to x. And for this term, we have k dot k, we're taking the partial of this expression with respect to z. So that will be plus the partial of b sub y with respect to z with respect to x minus partial squared of b sub x with respect to z with respect to y. So that would be our expression. Let's take a look at it. Here we have the partial squared of b sub z. Here we have the partial squared of b sub z. Here it's taken with respect to x, then respect to y. Here it's taken with respect to y, then respect to x. But the order in which you perform this differentiation doesn't matter. So these two terms are going to cancel out. So these are gone. Here we have, and this should be the partial squared here, with respect to z and respect to x. Here we have Mark minus the partial square of b sub y with respect to x with respect to z. Here we have plus the partial square of b sub y. And again, the order of the differentiation doesn't matter. So these cancel out. And then here we have the partial square of b sub x with respect to y with respect to z. So we have minus the partial square of b sub x. And again, the order of the differentiation doesn't matter. They're going to have the same value, except this is plus and that's minus. So those cancel. So the divergence of the curl ends up being zero.
And you see that in a lot of textbooks. We thought we would just take a minute here and, and just derive that relationship. Now, one other topic that we want to cover in this introductory video. What happens if you take the curl of a gradient? In the last video, we took the divergence of a gradient. Now what happens if we have this? So, that's the curl of the gradient. Let's write it out in vector form after we make a little bit more space here. So writing this in matrix form, this will equal partial with respect to x. And the partial of c with respect to x. That in matrix form then is the curl of the gradient. And if we go ahead then and expand it in determinate form, what we get is this is equal to the partial square root of phi with respect to z with respect to y minus the partial square root of phi with respect to y with respect to z plus the partial square root of phi with respect to x with respect to z oh yes this is the i component and then for here for the j component that's the first term the second term is the partial square root of phi with respect to z with respect to x that's the j component and the k component is the partial square root of phi. If you can take this derivative, cover up that column, cover up that, cover up this column, cover up that row. You take the determinant, this two drag two determinant here. This is the partial square root of phi with respect to y, with respect to x, minus the partial square root of phi with respect to x with respect to y. So it has i, j, and k components, but they're all zero. Here are taking the partial squared with respect to z, with respect to y. Now do it with respect to y and respect to z. So that's zero. Same thing there. Same thing there. So this too comes out equal to zero. And again, we're going to use these relationships a lot. Uh, later on when we get into more complicated aspects of vector analysis and also when we do our vector identity problems. Anyway, that's the end of the introduction then for the curl uh, of the vector. Come back, join us in the next video, and we ought to move on then to considering how to handle different types of vector identity problems.